External stimulus. Can it change our internal paradigms? In other words, does our environment dominate the way we think and act? No doubt it has a significant impact on us, and it seems like when people make goals, they're actually trying to get into a new environment. Have you ever noticed that? A new stimulus. Prisoners want to be on the Isles of Tahiti, but so do the entrepreneurs of Wall Street. Okay, People in the hood, they want to move up in life, but so do the people in the upper crust social circles. It never seems to be enough. Do you know that saying that there's always someone out there that's better than you? Well, if you think about it, at some point that saying has to be wrong. I mean, there's going to be the best guitar player on the planet. Okay, he's the best guitar player on the planet. And he hears that saying, and because of that saying, he thinks that there's someone out there that's actually better than him. However, he'll never know. He may have reached the apex of his profession, his hobby, or whatever have you, and doesn't even know that he is the virtuoso guitar player on the planet. And what's worse, others don't know it either. So even if he's the best guitar player on the planet, six billion people don't know. They don't care. They don't even know the person's name. Why do we always want something better? What is it about human nature that always craves something better? And another thing, why do some of us self-sabotage? Why do some of us oppose ourselves? Why do some of us do things to ourselves that we know will hurt us. But for some reason, we think that we must fulfill the sabotage. Is it maybe that we actually fear success? I mean, but isn't that silly to fear success? Once we get up on this pedestal, it's much further for us to fall. Maybe. I guess. Some of us feel comfortable living incognito and silently at the bottom of the barrel, at the bottom of the totem pole, just eking out a living, just surviving, because we're too afraid that if we climb, that we will only fall. So what's the point? I want to ask you who defines success anyway. Now, do you allow other people's opinion of you to determine whether you're successful or not? Okay? Do you let other people's opinions influence that? Or do you know deep inside whether you're successful or not? Do you know deep inside whether you are a good person or not? And as we know, even if you think you're a good person by your own subjective standards. The Bible says that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. So get over yourself. And think about, you know, all this work that we do to earn a living. Aren't we possibly just chasing our tails around the tree? And aren't we possibly missing the big picture? Isn't there more to life than just making a buck? Now think about it, in the twilight of our lives, are we really going to feel good about how much money we made or what impact we have made upon this world? Are we going to think about all the real estate that we've owned or all the nice cars that we've driven or how we've taught our loved ones to find God? Have you ever thought that this mundane nine-to-five life was maybe worth walking away from. Maybe we could chase that inner voice in our hearts that's calling us to the real destiny in our lives. Have we forgotten where that voice is? Can we still hear it? Or is that inner voice, that silent voice, has it been drowned out by society's values or worrying about clothes or food or, or what we're going to drink? 
I think it's time that we quiet our minds. That we take time to reflect, to reflect on the important things in life. We need to listen for the inner song. We can't die with the music still inside. We've got to get it out there. We need to not only make a difference, but we need to make the difference that we were meant to make. Don't chase someone else's dream. Don't fulfill someone else's destiny. Till we meet again, dig deeper, go higher.